Hi, it's Jeff here at MacroMonster.com. Sometimes people ask me what um, a beginner user would like to know when they first launch CorelDRAW for the first time. I'll show you some of the things that I do and when I show people. For example, if I have a blank document, I'll often make it landscape just so it fits the, the screen size better. I don't need the ruler, so I'll often get rid of those just to add a little bit more room yet. So I'll view menu and then uncheck rulers. And then uh, we're going to learn about weld trimming and intersecting. If we were to left click on the rectangle tool and drag out on the page, you can create rectangles. Pressing control creates a perfect square. If I layer, layer them over top of each other, select all four of them with the pick tool, then some options show up on the property bar. And this changes depending on what tools are selected. Uh, in this case, I want to weld them all together into one single shape, and that would be the left the uh, leftmost one there. And you can see that now all of those have kind of been uh, welded together, literally. So I can left click on a color. If you want to uh, have a thicker outline, you can maybe type in a different size up there. If you want to zoom to the documents, uh, or the shapes in your document, press the F4 key and that'll be a fast way to, to kind of maximize the view of whatever's in your document. I use that quite often. If you want to change the outline color, you right click with your mouse in the um, uh, color swatches there. If you need to open that up, you left click down here and then you have more choices for different colors. Alright, so let's talk about trimming. Trimming is kind of like um, using a tool. You create the tool that you want to use to trim it to something else. And I'm going to use this circle to trim into this other shape. So to use it, you left click on the circle, shift, select the, the other shape by holding down the shift key, left clicking on that, and then up on the property bar you can uh, left click on the second shape in and that gives you a way to trim into shapes. If you want to intersect into shapes you can shift select the shape again and use the third option in and what that does is it creates a new piece wherever two shapes are overlapping before. So that's welding, trimming and intersecting. There are two different types of text in Corel Draw. One is artistic text and the other is paragraph text. Artistic text is something you would use for uh, you know a short string of text such as Bob's gardening supplies maybe for a business business card or something like that and then if you look through your different fonts you can do things like that you can stretch things out or think if you ever need to do things along those lines much more easily uh, but it's meant for working with text so that um, you know in a more simplified way than if you wanted like a long columns of text if you wanted that you would left click on the uh, text tool and drag out a frame where you would paste in some text and um, you know sent things like sentences like that just as a quick example, and then by adjusting the size of the frame, it uh, does things like that. All right, so certain tools work differently depending on what type of text you're using. Um, and you can just you know, break text apart, scale it, do all kinds of things, left click to color it. Pressing the tab key allows you to quickly go to other shapes in your document, like that. If we look in the uh, this menu here we've got a lot of interesting choices such as drop shadows um, this one here I'm going to change the size of it a little bit whatever you know so there's a lot of fun things you can do in Corel Draw if you want to fill shapes with colors not a problem if you press the G key you can drag across the shape and create a gradient or a fountain fill type shape like that uh, there's other, if you press the G key, there's other choices in here for other types of fills. I happen to be working in X6 here at the moment. And so you've got a variety of things you can do. And X6 supports uh, some new features such as transparent pattern fills, like that. Uh, okay, so that's uh, different types of text, a few different effects. And so let's get rid of that. What else do we have in there? It can blend between shapes. And that's in the um, menu here where you can kind of 
do stuff like that. And what else do we have? Extrusions, if you need to extrude shapes. Uh, one of the more popular things, though, I would say would be to give things some transparency, such as like that, make it nice and thick. If you had something underneath it like that, if you wanted that to fade that against the background, you could go into here and choose a transparency tool and drag across the shape like this. Right? Okay, so that's adding that transparency. When I send to a printer, often I'll combine this with the bottom piece by converting both items to a bitmap by selecting them and going to bitmaps, convert to bitmap, and choose a color model. I like to use CMYK myself, but and then now that it's a permanent bitmap that um, will print very reliably on any type of printer. Okay, so one of the, uh, just to wrap things up here, just to show you one of my final favorite things that I use constantly is the built-in alignment shortcuts. And that allows you to align something to something else very quickly. So if I wanted to align this yellow square to the purple one, select the yellow one, shift select the purple one, press C for center alignment, E for aligning the other way. If I wanted to top align it to the uh, purple one, select it, press T for top, R for right, or B for bottom, L for left, that type of thing. So very quickly you can align shapes to other ones. Like if I wanted to top align all of these, I'd select them all, press T, uh, press E or B to align them. If I want to distribute them, Shift E or Shift P. And let's see here. C. I'm just going to give myself a little more room. Select A. Shift A or Shift um, C. Two different ways of distributing shapes over a distance. So that's just a real quick overview of some features in CorelDRAW. Uh, it works with a lot of different uh, types of file formats, bitmaps that you might import. Uh, just look, check out some of my other videos. Learning how to make a key, for example, is, uh, has been a pretty popular one. That's about it. Hope you enjoyed.